It's actually a funny story how I became a violist in the beginning. I was, um, as a child, I, I sang a lot, and that was really my, my passion. I thought I would have a, a life as a singer. And when I was eight years old, there was a concert at my school, and all of the local peripatetic teachers came to play a short piece. And the viola teacher played the theme tune from Harry Potter. So I said, I'll do that one. Um, and and uh, I had no clue what, 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 what that life would entail, and in fact, I was a terrible student. I really didn't practice at the beginning. On Saturdays, I would go to the music school um, and there would be kind of orchestra and, and a bit of chamber music. But I, I really didn't progress at all until my voice broke. I couldn't sing as I wanted to anymore or when the voice is undergoing this period of changing. And so I suddenly realized, oh, I, I, can, I can make music with the viola. And I started practicing all day long and then it, it sort of very quickly uh, took over my life from that point. As a, as a violist, one faces very unique and, and interesting challenges because actually we have a huge and fascinating repertoire. However, uh, there's not so much by the, the canon of, of famous composers. There's no Brahms or Tchaikovsky or Rachmaninoff concertos to play. And, and yet there's such an interesting, interesting repertoire, but, but people don't know it. So I've generally found when people come and listen to an, an unknown viola concerto, they, they, in my experience, they, 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 they always love it. So, um, so they're, they're, it's just, just a matter of convincing people of this beautiful repertoire. With strings, I look for something that has a good response time, but also can take quite a lot from the bow. And so it's a mixture between these two things, because some strings might respond very well, or have a very nice sound, but when you want to go deeper into the string, they, they, they can't necessarily give more. So I'm, I'm very happy with, with these strings that I'm currently playing, because they have a really good sort of balance between the two things. For this instrument, the, the thing I find is that it has so much depth. I also need something which gives a bit more brilliance and a little bit more sort of zing. And, and so these strings I'm currently using are the, the, the A, D, and G string from Rondo and the Spiracore uh, C string. And I find for this viola, they, the, 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 they really get that, that balance of having this very open sound in the upper register and having this, the, this intensity and, and growling sound, even sometimes a slightly gnarly sound on, 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 on the lower strings. And, and, and I love that, and, and it has a lot, of, a lot of power. I think that that's also an important consideration with strings and with an instrument. Something that has enough, uh, enough power that, 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 that you can choose not to use it. Because I think maybe sometimes people think about volume or, or power as, 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 as just being about playing as, as loudly as possible, which, which is not what it's about at all, actually. I think it's about having that possibility in your arsenal so, so that you can have a real range, so that then you can choose not to play loudly at all and you can play as softly as you like, but to know that you have that color, you have that possibility that you can really have this explosive range of, of sound. So that's something that, that I look for very much in strings and in instruments. In 
in everything in life, our, our imagination of something is always different to, to the reality. And definitely that's true of, of, of building a career as, as a musician and as a violist. And I think I, as, a, as a teenager, I had such a naive idea about, uh, about the world and, and about life. And actually, I, I, I'll tell you one big misconception I had. I, I, I read an article when I was a teenager which talked about doing 10,000 hours of practice. And it said that when you do 10,000 hours, then you become an expert. And so I, I really had this idea that, that I was gonna kind of graduate from practicing at some point, that I would work really hard and then, and, and then I could just play concerts and it would be like that. But I, I think I've done way more than 10,000 hours of, of practicing the viola now. And, uh, <laughs> and it continues to be, uh, to, to be a wonderful tyrant in, in, in my life practicing. I mean, it's something I enjoy so much actually to, to play the viola and to feel that I'm progressing. But the, 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 the need to practice as, as I improve as an instrumentalist, the need to practice definitely doesn't go away. In fact, sometimes it seems like it's getting more and more. And, and I think as a student, you maybe learn a piece every few weeks or a movement of a piece every few weeks. And then as a professional musician, you have to play several pieces every week and, and the repertoire is constantly changing and there's new things and there's modern music which has extended techniques which perhaps you, you never even used that technique properly before. So it's constant work and constant uh, matter of challenging oneself and reevaluating things and things that seemed to work easily uh, last year. So sometimes they work even better now and sometimes then they're suddenly more difficult. So, so it's this constant, uh, constant process a, a, every day with the instrument, sort of resetting and 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 relearning. And and my big misconception was that that w w when you w when you get there, that then you don't need to practice anymore. And that's <laughs> that's a long way away from the truth. <laughs>